we have in this country is we're completely incapable, it seems, of any long-term planning. We're completely incapable of building a consensus uh, across changes of government as to what's needed in the UK economy. It's moving to a buy it off the shelf uh, from abroad uh, concept rather than actually develop a manufacturing long-term strategy for the UK. That's one of the major contrasts between us and, and, for instance, Germany, where no matter who's in power, there is continuity of support for critical industries like defence manufacturing. Belgium and, uh, uh, say, Denmark, neither of which have massive defence industries, to put it mildly. But on almost every procurement they do, they will always seek to say, well, we have these niches, what can this money do for our industries? Even with uh, that quality of product and the level of skill, we've seen a situation where tens of thousands of jobs have been lost over the last decade. We calculate something like 50,000 jobs have been lost in the UK. But we did have massive redundancies through the 90s exactly as you've said, because of not being joined up, because of not having a strategy, that we're losing the jobs, we're losing the livelihoods. You know, from a town of 60,000 people where we had 13,000 at one time in the yard, going down to two and a half, it was, it was, it's a massive impact. Businesses would simply shut down. The housing market would get devastated. Property prices would, would plummet. There would be nothing for people to do in these communities. The real issue here is that our government has committed to spend 2% of GDP uh, on military uh, defence equipment and the reality is that currently we're spending 12% of our budget buying equipment from America. By 2020 it'll be a quarter of that budget being spent overseas. I think we currently have £19.5 billion is our procurement uh, for UK defence. Now, 25% of £19.5 billion is a lot of money. That money should be invested in the country. And we now have a situation where British taxpayers' money is being spent in America to build equipment that could and should be built here in the UK by our members, our workers in our defence industry. We are seeing a very steady rise in the amount of uh, US companies' turnover in the UK. And then, when you look on a very conservative basis looking ahead, US company turnovers go higher and higher. In all these regions, in all these areas where they have a, a, a defence company, one defence job accounts for five jobs in the community. Whether it's the local shop, whether it's the schools, whether it's the hospitals, the, the economy, the, the money that's put back into the economy. If you spend that money in the UK, you get multiple benefits for every pound you spend. If you spend it in the USA, you get nothing back in return. And that's the message that I think we have to deliver to the decision makers in Whitehall and the politicians in government. Defend our spend. There is an incredibly good skill base. It is why on some other programmes, other countries come to us for help, advice, cooperative developments and so forth. It gives young people who aren't going to go to university and stuff an opportunity to, to get a skill and a trade for life um, and something that can stand them in good stead. And it's worth bearing in mind if you look at apprenticeships, two of the companies with the largest intake of engineering apprentices, I think they may be the two largest in the UK, is BA Systems and Babcock. Now, you know, there is a future um, and there can be a very good future. People believe in the industry. It's not simply turn up, do a job and go home. It's quite a, an emotional thing. They believe in the product, they believe in the jobs, they believe in the skills, they believe in what it's doing, what it's there for. So it's the whole gamut. It's not simply a job that can be replaced with another job. It's, it's a, a vocation, it's, it's a way of life. So to take these defence jobs away, it would be massive for all the communities that they work in. Not only should you manufacture the, 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 the planes, the, the engines, you should also manufacture the machines that build the planes, that build the engines. So I think there's a lot of lost opportunities that this government and any future government should be looking towards uh, the research and development and investing more money into uh, the highly skilled workers that represent the aerospace and shipbuilding sector. Um, the skills we get through the MOD contracts, um, highly trained engineers and that, that, that's what we can use to try and break into these other markets which helps us in the downturn. The Royal Navy is getting smaller so um, the workload available is smaller so it helps to safeguard some of the jobs. 
yes, if you can diversify and you can get perhaps a more balanced uh, industrial base and so forth, do it. But if someone is then suggesting to destroy what you've got before you diversify, I don't really see the point of that. Um, that, that will lead to loss of jobs, loss of skills and higher unemployment. We don't think there's the actual political will or the finance there to make it happen. So diversification, yes, all for it, but I don't think there'll be a climate in my lifetime to support it. Yeah.